Hello, welcome to episode 210 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 26th of May. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, a gadget, a question for the Ask Me Anything section, shop update and also a little clip where I show what Jensen's wearing this week. So you can find a couple of make-alongs um, on Ravelry and on Instagram and I'll describe those in the description bar down below. One's Craft 20 a day and the other one is the Craft House Magic Shawl Along 2022. Um, the hashtags for those to use on Instagram are down below and you can pop over to Ravelry if you want to use that thread as well. And I'll be drawing prizes for the Craft 20 a day every three months and for the Spring Shawl and Long at the end of June. So watch out for those. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? So first of all I have my Great Ambition mittens and this is a pattern by Diana Waller and they are some colour work mittens and they have gorgeous two colour colour work all the way round. On the front you have a snake that's in the shape of an S and they are mirror imaged for the left and right hands which I really like actually. I think that it balances nicely. And then on the back of the mitten you have diamond stitches and the cuff is all from 2x2 two two rib with that infamous striped cuff like you would normally get for the school uniform for um, Harry Potter and I do like the detail of the thumb you have the diamond shape on the inside and that S detail on the other side and the, you have two different charts for the left and the right hands um, but of course if you wanted to have the S rather than in a mirror image on both sides you could easily do that. Um, it's charted, the instructions are charted which I find really helpful, nearly nice and easy to read and, and it's this is knitted in some Jameson and Smith and it is colourways 65 for the greeny blue and colourway 203 for the grey and I have this much left so the first mitten, I had some green left over from another colour work project and I thought, oh, maybe I'll just have enough to finish it. And I used 17 grams in the first mitten of the green colour and I think it was possibly 10 of the grey. There wasn't enough left of that skein to finish the second mitten. So I just bought a whole new skein and started it from scratch. But actually, if you look really closely, there is a bit of a colour difference. There is a little bit more sort of a turquoise shade to this greeny um, colour. But I think they go really nicely still, so that's okay. I'm sure Adam won't really notice, really. They'll keep him nice and warm. So the moral of the story is don't try and use up yarn when you aren't really sure whether you've got enough <laughs> and make sure you buy the whole project's worth of the same colour in the same transaction so that you know that they're the same dye lot. This would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I've got them on some mitten blockers. I got mine from Woodaco. I'm afraid Woodaco isn't running at the moment because it is in the Ukraine but it is a lovely company that do these beautifully cut um, wooden blockers for mittens and also for socks as well. I do have a sock pair. There is a separate piece that goes in for the thumb which is really useful because some of these mitten patterns the thumb is at the front and then sometimes at the side so you can use it in either direction. Um, so that's really helpful to have that separate. It does have a little hole. It did come with a little ring to keep them together. I will leave a link to the website, but like I say, it is closed at the moment because they are in the Ukraine. A couple of things I'd like to say about the pattern. So the pattern calls for 2.25 millimetre needles, but I used 2.5 millimetre needles because I know I knit my colour work quite tightly and 2.5 millimetre needles, it makes a nice tension of the work for me for four ply yarn. And I 
I knew that around about 60 stitches for a mitten and 2.5 millimeter needles is the right size for my hand and these are for Adam but we have quite similar sized hands so that's easy to sort of work out that it would fit. The pattern is quite easy to follow mostly if you can follow a chart it'll be nice and easy and um, the only thing is it's a little bit fiddly working a chart on on the thumb but if you just take it nice and slowly it's it's still quite easy just a little bit fiddly there so another good tip for this pattern is that when you get to the top here and you've only got a few stitches left rather than what the pattern says is run a needle through those stitches with the yarn that's left um, I actually did a kitchener stitch from the stitches on this side and the stitches on this side to give a nice even finish there and I also did the same for the thumb as well just to neaten it up because I think it gives a nice continuous look to the top of the mitten and the thumb and I suppose I should show you what they look like on really as well as just on the blockers there we go I did actually this time I blocked them I completely forgot that the first time I blocked the first one because I did I blocked one separately just because I wanted to see what it looked like what I did is that I didn't soak the cuff area as I was soaking the rest of the mitten to block it and that then meant that it didn't stretch out the rib on the wrist here which I think is nicer because it clings to your wrist a little bit better but I completely forgot I just bunged them in the to soak and I did end up blocking out that rib a little bit but it still clings quite nicely to my wrist so that's what they look like and Adam is very excited to wear them although the weather's warmed up now so but at least they're ready for next year <laughs> so my next object that I wanted to show you that is completely finished is a little cardigan now this is the playdate cardigan by tin can knits and Liz knitted most of this um, but I did pick up the stitches and do the ribbon around the neck because she hates doing that bit and I also added some little black buttons because the black will coordinate nicely with the little faces that I was going to put on to the little pockets and I'm so pleased I did I think that they've worked out really nicely it's harder to get the stitches neater on top of knitted stitches um, but I think I've managed to get my point across there's two little bare faces on each of the pockets there so this pattern goes right from I think it's birth to large adult size so it's well worth taking a look at the pattern if you like the shape of this cardigan I really like that it's sort of v-neck I like that sort of shape also I was thinking that because it doesn't go right under his chin if there is dribbles it'll go on the t-shirt and it'll be easier to wash than cardigans all the time so I've knitted this in some merino and nylon four ply yarn in my chocolate colourway and it's a sort of pinky shade of brown and I really like how it's turned out with those little faces on. I got the idea from seeing a jumper with the faces on in the middle of the jumper but actually when it's with a cardigan I thought it needs two to balance it out either side. Um, so there we go. That's Jensen's new little jumper or cardigan. It is the six to 12 month size that we've knitted. I say we, cause Liz did some and I did some. And I'm gonna see whether it fits him. I will save Jensen trying it on till the end of the podcast in his normal section so that you can see whether it fits. And I haven't tried it on him yet, so it'll be exciting to see. I blocked this cardigan a week or two ago and I actually did record how I blocked it so this is among the few things that I blocked at the same time so that I could make a tutorial on how I block, um, how I wet block things anyway. Um, so that should be up in the next couple of weeks I think when I get time to edit it. So to do the embroidery I just used some black embroidery thread. I just made sure that I'd really tied it off well on the inside. It does look a little bit messy on the inside but it's very secure with the way that I've sort of I did a knot in the thread and then wove it into the stitches a bit like duplicate stitching and then um, just make sure that it was really secure by knotting it quite a few times so that it doesn't get pulled off. So next is my crochet section. Now I've been working on my Ziggy Interrupted um, wrap and I have managed to do like one stripe's worth 
<laughs> of these little squares. Now I haven't joined them together yet. I did start to join them together but I realised that because I've got quite a contrast between my sort of darker colour and these mid and lighter tones that when I join them together in this sort of medium coloured yarn that you can actually see them of the um, the darker squares so I'm going to have to change the thread that I'm joining them together with um, on each sort of side or I'm thinking I might actually use a thinner thread that is is more neutral to join them together actually so I'm going to have a play with that and I'll let you know how I get on but I've pinned them all on my wool pressing mat because I thought you could really see how that sort of stripe will turn out so this is one width of the the wrap and when I've sewn those all together there's a zigzag bit just above it and then it keeps repeating those sections but I love the way this is looking at the moment and how subtle those tones are working together I've just pinned these on for now um, as I haven't joined them together yet but at least you can sort of see how those colours are going to work together. I tried to choose quite sort of neutral and not too brightly coloured yarns for this because I thought that I'd like to see sort of subtle differences in the different little squares and it not be too brightly coloured so that I can wear it with lots of things. So I chose a sort of purpley grey colour scheme and the yarns that I've used are, so these two are Ducky Darlings in the Poison colourway, that almost looks black on camera but it is a very dark purple. These are the same colourway but this one is a merino silk and yak whereas this is just a merino nylon so the different base changes the colour of the yarn as well. And then I have these two yarns, so the second two our love letter and snails pace and I'll leave links to the dyers in the description bar down below as well so I really like the way those four colours work together um, in this sort of purpley colour scheme so my next section is my sewing section now this is what I've been basically obsessing over this last week so I did a class at my local quilt group with a lady called Pam and she was showing us how to sew a penny rug so a penny rug is basically a mat where you put candles on and that which was created from scraps of fabric from clothes that are worn out and these were made as early as the 1800s and what they used was pennies as a template for the circles that made up these rugs i've chosen to do hearts around the edge of mine although i haven't started to join the outside bit but this was the main bit in the middle so Pam had designed these little templates for the hairs um, but I have I, I chose the things from a, like a sheet of different designs um, to put together so I've chosen these two hairs to go in the middle and then I chose this floral design and I did four of those as well as some sort of they're sort of like maple leaves um, and those go around the outside and I've chose a a pale turquoisey green and a darker green to go with it. Now how I have actually almost finished sewing all of these pieces down although I did run out of yarn to do the stems of some of the darker coloured leaves and I also thought I should add some whiskers in for that hair just to complete it a little bit more. So that is the centre part of my penny rug but there are going to be some really cute hearts around the edge. So normally a penny rug would have circles, but one design that she showed us had hearts. So I said, right, I'm going to do hearts just because I like them. Plus this floral design looks a bit like hearts as well. So I'm going to do hearts all the way around the outside. And I have done two of the hearts at the moment. And they're going to be going like, around the edge all the way around like that and I've got different colours as well so I've picked these two have got the different pinks and then I'm going to do the two different greens in the centre of the hearts as well and they're all stitched around the outside I've got to stitch around the outside of this panel as well so maybe in a week or two I will have finished that um, so Pam did a workshop for our local quilt group because she's recently joined the group and I did ask Pam whether she did a pattern if, if you did want to purchase her pattern um, and she hadn't got it online just yet but if you email her on an email address that I'll pop in the description bar down below um, I'm sure she'll be able to sort out a pattern to send you online if you did want to purchase a pattern now this one is the one I've sort of picked the different shapes 
clips and put them on there but I will pop a picture on the screen of one of the ones or of a couple of the ones that Pam had as examples that were really lovely so first of all there was the one where she'd done a hair as well but there were different items different flowers around the hair that she'd made and um then she also did one that was a sheep and also one with that was a different shape like a rectangle that could be used as a wall hanging that was a bee one as well which was lovely so if you want to get those patterns if you email her, Pam on the email address I've left in the description bar I'm sure she'll be able to sell the pattern to you anyway I'm getting on really well sewing these it's quite handy to have a small little sewing project that's around when you're looking after a little baby because I'm every time he's busy playing for a few minutes but playing on his own I can do a few stitches and get quite a bit more done um, than I would normally if I didn't sort of get a few stitches in here and there so I just wanted to mention where I got my felt from because I used a wool mix felt and quite a lot of it is from a shop called paper and string because I really like this mottled effect of felt um, which has got quite a good wool content in as well and that was paper and string and I also got a few little pieces from my local sewing shop as well which is called So Simple in Taverham. So I'm going to go on to my gadget now and this is linking in to the embroidery things that I've just showed you and I thought I'd show you where I keep my embroidery threads and keep them in colour order because that's just that's just what floats my boat. <laughs> So I keep my embroidery threads in these boxes and I have spent quite a lot of time getting them in colour order so that it is just quite satisfying looking at them. And I've got quite a few different boxes like this. I have one with pinks, oranges and yellows in and I think there's more of a random selection in this box. Um, they're not quite full, they're so purples and beiges and different colours like that. So over the years I've picked up these little spools of thread from charity shops and um, if I've purchased embroidery thread myself I've popped them on one of these um, to put all together in these containers but a lot of them are actually from charity shops or car boot sales and things because actually that much thread actually buying that much thread would cost a small fortune <laughs> so I've got those three with a lot of the colours in and then I have a smaller one that I take if I'm out and about with the ones that I'm sort of using more currently um, which I find really useful as well because you don't really want to be lugging big ones of these about all the time especially if you're not quite sure what colours you need and I have to take all three <laughs> So that is the gadget for this week. I will pop a link in the description bar down below where you can get them, but you can get them from most sort of craft shops um, or I think hobby crafts sell them as well, these sort of plastic boxes. I think I got them from my local sewing shop um, when I started to collect quite a lot of them. So the next section is the Ask Me Anything section and I had a question about where I keep my knitting needles. Now, I have a couple of sets that I've kept actually in the bags that the needles came in. So the first one I purchased was this one. It's a higher, higher needle set. And I did originally purchase all the small sizes. So they come in small, miniature and large, these needles. Um, but you can only get the sets of the small and large in terms of the full set of needles. And there's quite a few missing out here because I've got them in various knitting bags. Um, but the interchangeable tips fit nicely all in these little compartments here. And then I have added some of the larger sizes because I don't really use the larger sizes needles too much. So I haven't bought a separate set of those, but I have used the sort of five, six, seven millimeter needles. So I've popped a couple of those into this case as well, where that actually just included the small size needles before. So in terms of higher, higher needles, the small size range comes from, goes from 2.75 millimeters to five millimeters. Um, so there's a couple of extra of larger ones there as well so in the back here there's a place to put your cables in and I've also got a needle gauge 
the ones that I sell in my shop now come with a shape one actually this was the one that I bought at the time and I bought this a long long time before I started stocking high high needles in my shop actually so I know that um they're really durable and they work really well because I've had these quite a few years. So after I'd been using that quite a long time and I've started stocking um, other needles in my shop, I purchased one. Well, <laughs> I, I, I basically stole it out of my stock. But this is the, the miniature set, which is for sock knitting. And the miniature set of needles goes from a two millimeter needle up to a 2.75 millimeter needle. So you have those needles in there. And I have got a couple of sets at, that I have got in use at the moment. So I haven't got them in the case. Um, but those have interchangeable cables as well that are kept in the back. And that's what that's the shape um, needle gauge that comes with the ones that I sell in my shop now. Um, but I couldn't resist having those because I do like the interchangeable sets, especially these miniature ones because the so the miniature ones go up to a 2.5 millimeter needle and the cables are a little bit more supple. They're a pink color. Um, so I do like that. That is a, a little bit more supple than the blue one. I do like the blue ones as well, but they're even nicer. Plus, they're a cute little pink colour. So those I like to use. And um, the 2.75 millimetre needle in this set, even though it's the miniature set, is actually comes under the the, the small needles. Um, so that there's some adapters in here so that the 2.75 millimeter needles fit on the tiny thin cables which is really nice so this is my sock needle set so I also keep my older long needles in this case that I made absolutely years ago it's just a wrap um, with a button to close it up and this was just some mode of fabric I had years ago and a needle has already dropped out of it so these are the really old needles I've had for years there's some that were my nan's needles I think um, although she didn't really knit very much the nan I got um, these needles from but she did have a couple of sets of needles which my mum inherited I think that they were these ones here with the little red tips on um, but that's some of my old straight needles and then I have another case where I keep some of my DPNs in so this is another case that I've made for myself to keep um, some DPN needles in and it's just made out of some calico because I like the natural look so there's quite a few of these needles missing because they're in various projects so I've got the different size DPNs on this side and on this side I've got some of the needles that are a bit sort of more unusual like the 12 inch ones for doing sleeves and ones like that so the packets can just sit nicely in this case so in terms of my sort of fixed needles I just have a bag that I made absolutely years ago and this was a free pattern um, from the internet somewhere except I added a salamander applique onto the side um, I'm not quite sure why I chose a salamander but there we go <laughs> I had some fabric that I had got left over from something I think I don't know whether I got it from a charity shop actually and actually the fabric on the outside is made from a pa pair of trousers that um, would worn away at the knees or something so I converted it into a bag so I made this bag out of it and I have basically just got my circular needles in a big wadge um, but they are in sort of size order there so that I can find what I want and then I do have a set of Knit Pro needles that I had years ago before I started using my higher higher needles. So I still kept those in there um, just all together really. So that is how I've got my, my needles. But I am tempted to get one of the, the higher higher sets um, that have, my, have the... The fixed needles because they do a set similar to this but it's more like a fold out pouch because of the fabrics that these higher higher needle cases are really lovely so I'm very tempted to get one of those or I could actually I could actually make a wrap for myself tailored to the specific needles that I use and then I could stitch the sizes on but whether I get round to that I don't know we shall see <laughs> in terms of crochet I have another one of these wraps and it's actually the same um, fabric that I used for my other wrap. And I've got a ribbon around the outside. 
and this is where I keep all my crochet hooks. So I had a set of really brightly coloured crochet hooks when I first started doing um, crocheting, but I have got one of the Clover Amore um, full sets of the ones that I sell in my shop in here as well because they're my favourites now and they're the other odd um, crochet hook that I've picked up from magazines etc but that is really handy to have all the crochet hooks in the same sort of place so that just folds down and then in like that and then ties closed so I hope that's helpful going through where I keep all my needles that is quite a lot of needles and crochet hooks oh dear <laughs> I have thought about trying to consolidate all the needles and hooks in one place really but um I'm, at least at the moment I know where things are and I can get to things and, and find them quite easily so at the moment I'm not too fussed about um having another sort out just yet at least so now is my shop update so last week I brought out the June yarn clubs and they will be available until the 5th of June on the website. So if you do want one of the June yarn clubs and you haven't looked so already, you can purchase them until the 5th of June and they will be shipped on the 10th of June. And I also brought out a project bag and yarn set that's the summer holiday theme. And I'll pop a picture up here of the artwork that I've created for it. So it, it shows the sort of colours that might be in the bag and the yarn set and the theme of the set. So you will get a medium sized project bag with some applique and free motion quilting on there. So they'll be special, exclusive for the kit as well as the yarn. You will get 100 grams of a full skein of yarn and a 20 gram mini so it's like a sock set but you don't have to use it for a pair of socks and then you've got choice of my four main bases um i won't go through all the bases you can see the link in the description bar down below um to the set so that you can have a look what different bases are available and i also put a couple of little extras in there um, so if you do want to purchase the summer holiday set that again will be available on my website until the 5th of June but that one will be shipped on the 30th of June so if you buy anything else from the shop it'll be shipped on the date that whatever set you've purchased is due to be shipped if that makes sense so if you want to hear updates of when I have shop updates for new things like yarn clubs etc don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter you have to all you need to do is pop to my website, scroll down to the bottom of the page and there's a little box there that you can pop your email address in and that will subscribe you to my email newsletter and each time I put something out new you'll get a notification and I do draw a prize for that every month so June I will be drawing the next prize so if you sign up before then you could be win with a chance of winning. So now we're on to Jensen's little section so over to you Jensen. So Jensen is wearing his little play date cardigan, aren't you? Do you like it? Do you? You're lost for words. <laughs> and you can just about see his little teddy bear embroidery just there. It does come up a little bit long on him at the moment, but it does say 6 to 12 months, so that should last quite a while. The sleeves are slightly sort of long on him, but obviously that'll last a bit longer then. I'm really pleased with how that looks. He has got his shorts underneath, because <laughs> it is still quite warm at the moment. Um, but it'll be nice for him to have in his push chair, just to keep the wind off a little bit. And it'll be even more useful in the winter. Do you like it? <gasps> Are you doing all wiggles? Are you doing all wiggles? <laughs> thank you very much, Jensen, and thank you, Daddy, for holding him. It's okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. He's a little bit quiet today. He's kicking those legs, though. Bless him. Thank you very much, Jensen. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!